This week on Celestia Ovation, we speak with a vibrant and energetic prophet in Celestial Church of Christ, Prophet Dr. B. Abiodu Adebamowo. Prophet B. Adebamowo, by the special grace and the calling of God, is a prophetic minister in Celestial Church of Christ. I am a native of Undu town. I belong to the real family of Adebamowo family in Undu town. Town, but I was born in the Putemeta, 19 December 1960. I was born at the Putemeta, 19 December 1960, to Sherubin and Seraphim. Prophet Adiba Moore, who was born into Sherubin and Seraphim Church, reviewed his journey into the Celestial Church. Um, basically, my mother told me that on the eighth day when I was born, that the prophet that was privileged to Christian mean told my father and my mom that this baby is going to be an instrument of God that God is going to use for the universe. Uh, actually, I escorted my six uh, prophetess Shola Osho to the yearly pilgrimage that is normally called Ukwai in 1971 to Port Novo. And during that period, I was able to engage one prophet that was very prominent in Celestial Church, uh, Lawyer Duarte. Lawyer Duarte told my sister that this is your brother is going to be an instrument in Celestial Church of Christ, that God is going to use him throughout the whole world. I was just looking at the man, I didn't take him, I didn't take him serious. Three, four years later, that was 19, precisely August 1974, at the Den Itere Parish, I was privilege to enter Celestial Church of Christ formally. Even the churches he has worshipped before settling down at Pentecost Parish, Songo Ota, Ogun State. Uh, if we had to go into that, I started my calling as a science man, only body in Celestial Church of Christ. And during that period, I was very passionate about Celestial Worship. I have to go through all the departments, the choir, uh, the choir uh, the only body department, the prophets, and in fact, uh, my my boss and uh, then uh, Prophet John Shudibo used to call me uh, B ten and one or whatever, because during that time I was very very versatile. But I can remember precisely in 1983 at Festa Parish, that was when uh, when we used to observe uh, a symbol at the Masilan, then they, they used to use one, one language, be your language. That is, uh, that was the first time I had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Uh, all along, if you look at the calling into the prophetic ministry, uh, nobody that joined the prophetic ministry as uh, by accident. There must be certain precedents that led to the calling, one thing led to the other. Uh, when I started the prophetic ministry, by then I was virtually rejected, even at First Star Parish. I remember that time, uh, Baba Shumari used to call it apprentice only, even when we gave uh, prophecy, they used to tear it. But, uh, but uh, uh, dramatically, when we find ourselves at Elephant and Castle in London, when I traveled to UK, and uh, Prophet Johnson met me, uh, I mean, Baba Shumari met me at Elephant and Castle, and he said, Ah, Prophet B. With this message that God used you to, to deliver at the University of Kansu, you are coming to Nigeria during our harvest. From, so I was just like the, the stone that was rejected by the builders now, that now becomes the head of the cornerstone. From there, from that time, they begin to reckon with me. So there are certain frustrations that they reveal the ministry all along. But thank God, if the calling is sure, and you, you know it is God that will publicize you, not you. The making of a prophet depends on the inspiration and the calling of the Holy Spirit. He revealed when he finally decided to be a clergy and the challenges faced after taking such decision. Oh, I was working at Flower Mills Nigeria Limited, Dokia Road, December 1986, when I gave my boss the letter that I'm going to resign from Flower Mills. He said I should hold on with the letter that this is my letter of promotion. I said, accept this my resignation. So, well, uh, a, so there are sort of conflict between me and my boss. I said, no, this is my letter of resignation. I'm not taking your letter of promotion. What actually communicated this incident was that while I was at the electrical workshop 
because I was trained as a technician after my secondary education at the Serious College. I used to be at the workshop, but my spirit was always restless. By then, I would just put my garment in a line on. I would ro rush down to Ilara Parish during the break time. Now let me go and attend to people to assist them, you show know, and go back and come back. Now one of these sections, when I sneak out of the uh, uh, out of the workshop, I prophesy for people up till about two four, and we are expected to close by five o'clock. So I have to rush back to a papa after four. Then I was asking my colleagues that uh, I believe my supervisor have not asked me. He said, "No, that you have been here now. We have been working together after break time." While I was at Ilara Parish, prophesying for people. So the man said that I was physically present. And from that time, I was there, I just pretended. And then inside my spirit, man, I knew that yes, God has been calling, that this, that this is the work of God, not the, not, not the work of man. And it got into a time I cannot continue again. I have to just resign from my vocational work. Ah, my mother then, before she died, she was angry because she said I've been making money at flat means that when I've just left school I'm making making money what, what what prompted me to say at this early stage that I have to they take up the cross back believe that kind of a thing that I just convinced him that I mean I, mean, I just convinced her that he should she should let go. Then at the same time my first posting in Celestial Church after December 31st 1986 when I resigned was Opoji Parish. Prophet Johnson transferred me to Opoji Parish, then Bender State. At Opoji Parish, God used me to destabilize all the tentacles of the kingdom of darkness. Because I used to go from one town to the other town, Jatu, uh, uh, Aochi, Uromi, all over the places. And that place happens to be an idol infested area. So before my mother died, she was even giving testimony that, look at this, my son, that I said I don't want him to do God's work. God is using, using him mightily. So she was even the one that was testifying to the goodness of the Lord. So that, that even inspired me. And Prophet Johnson uh, told her that God has a purpose for the calling of your son. Just leave him in the area of his giftedness and let him go ahead. When asked if there was a time he wanted to leave the church, this was his response. That aspect of leaving Celestial Church is completely out of it. But there are a lot of trouble, frustrations that I passed through during my earlier time of calling. For instance, at Bamake Parish, we used to receive 500 naira. They call it stipend, they don't call it salary. 500 and by, by, by that time it's very funny when I go, go to the office at Bamaka, I just distribute the money for people. Ah, Prophet B, ah, oh, oh, like by no, no, don't worry, God will provide. Then along the line, there are some people that were very envious of my calling, but Prophet Johnson warned them that you don't compare yourself with, with Prophet B. Prophet B is my son, and I trusted him, I know that God is using him mightily. And during that time, and there was a time, one midnight. I can never forget. Yeah, it was a very traumatic experience. I was right inside my room at Bameke. Then I have to open the door around 2.30 a.m. midnight. I just find myself walking out of the compound. I was trekking from Bameke to Ikola, Ikola. About to, I was getting closer to Ikpaja. Then once the Spirit of God just ministered to me, that, where are you going? Your boy used to call it around C or as I see that kind of a thing. <laughs> in fact, anything about Prophet B would have been down the drain now. Then I just turned back. Then I went back. The following morning, I could not narrate my experience to, any, uh, to anybody. So during that time, I just give glory to the God of Celestial Church because I know it was a spiritual attack that would have banished me from the uh, enviable presence of God. Speaking on the controversies surrounding his calling, Prophet Adebamo pointed that he ministered according to God's revelation, which is in the dictate of the Holy Spirit. The one thing I want you to understand, when you don't know your identity, people will call you any name. The Lord showed me the methodology of heaven and the revelation of heaven about my calling. And in Celestial Church, you know there are a lot of proliferation of worship even in Celestial Church, unless we are deceiving ourselves. The truth of the matter is that when I go to 
crusades or when I'm invited for any ministration, I used to ask God that, God, what did you want them to hear? Not what they want to hear. But when the Bible said, man does not live by bread in the room, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So by the time I started, I remember one of my, one, of my, one crusade that was held at LSDPC, at, at his order in Boston. Ministers of God have been ministering. They wanted to use my time to minister when I just mounted the podium. The Lord revealed to me that there are some gang of armed robbers hanging around the crusade, that they are about to go and rob after this crusade, that if they attempt it, they are going to die. They are going to meet their Waterloo. You won't believe it. When I just dropped the microphone, when I was disembanking from the podium, those guys just came to me. Ah, Baba, I think bad when we saw you later. We told her that fellow robbed her. The Lord went back. So they were confronting me. So, so people were wondering. So that prophecy was even true. So you can imagine that kind of instances. So the reason why people see me as a controversial, as a radical and controversial prophet is that I know the dictates of the Holy Spirit, the receptivity of the Spirit of God and the Spirit of discernment by the grace of God in this prophetic ministry to some extent the Lord gives him the, the blueprint. So when I go to any ministration, I ask God, what do you want me to say? So that's the reason why different dimensional gifts used to manifest. Uh, there was a case of a woman, uh, uh, I was in a crusade, I said, okay, the whole woman here, yeah, the Lord told me that you should just place your hand on your breast. People were just laughing, ah, this is humorous, this is very funny. What kind of embarrassment is that? Why should the other guys to hold their breast? One woman in that crusade, it was at Ejibu Junction, uh, the Tuesday she died of cancer after the crusade. Then, then, the, then the organizer of the crusade came to me that, Mama, I'm finished, I'm enjoying it, go forward, dear him. And she was the one that God did to me. That, that cancerous uh, spirit inside her was actually negative forces. And anything that is, the Bible revealed to us that right from the time of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered death violence, the violence take it by force. And that kind of revelation, we call it instructional prophecy. Instruct the instructions that just place your right hand during the prayer, that the Holy Spirit will go. But she was laughing. She died on Tuesday. Then they, were, they started lamenting her that, that I managed. I said, that is the grace that the Lord has given to me. He pointed that prophetic ministry as a divine mandate of heaven, which many ministers are lacking its blueprint. Prophetic ministry predominantly is a ministry that has the blueprint of heaven, that has the mandate of heaven. Many people today, they claim that they are called to prophetic ministry. They are just acting in error because you must first pray to know your area of giftedness. When God called Jeremiah, in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, Jeremiah told God that I cannot speak, um, he was giving God for flame says because God told him, right from your mother's womb, I have ordained and anointed you to be my prophet to the nation. Jeremiah was a prophet to the nations. So he was giving prophecy that was affecting kings, nations, kingdoms. So my ministry in celestial church does not entail within the confines of the church. Because if we are to categorize prophetic ministry, prophetic ministry is a global ministry. It's not a ministry that can be shoved up somewhere. So many people today, they don't know their area of giftedness. And when you are sowing at the harvest field of another person, by the time when the time of harvest comes, it is that person that is going to reap it. So many people that claim to be called to the prophetic ministry, they are just using noise in place of voice. Because God, before Samuel was called to the prophetic ministry, in those days they used to call them seer, Arion. Samuel was under the tutelage of Eli. When God was about to turn against Eli in that first Samuel chapter 2, verse 30, that anybody that honors me, I will honor you. If you don't honor me, I will dishonor you. Then God ministered to Samuel while he was sleeping. Samuel. That time Samuel was a boy. In prophetic ministry, Eli happened to be a man. That is the area of spiritual maturity, which people do not respect in prophetic ministry. Then the second time, he had a voice. Oh God, you called me. He said, no, I did not call you. That was where the gift of discernment comes. Eli was able to know that, ah, it was God was about to speak to this young boy. If you add this voice, that was the key that opens the door. 
If you hear this word for the third time, say, Speak, Lord, for the Sabbath hear it. But many men of God today, they'll be boasting, How long will we pray? And God said, God has not spoken. They have not even heard the voice of God. But because they are just, they are just living in a world of fantasy, they are just trying to manipulate people's ignorance. That's, they are just playing on their intelligence. Prophetic ministry is not like that. Because prophetic ministry has a divine mandate of love heaven. Elijah told the prophet of Baal, let us go to Mount Carmel. It is the God that answered by fire that Israel will serve. And during that period, Israel got himself engrossed in the worship of Baal. Baal is a God of fertility. So they have to abandon the worship of God and replace him with the worship of Baal. Then Elijah called them that. How long shall we continue to live with two opinions? If God is God, let us have him. Many people today, they are in the prophetic ministry. Some of them, they are just making merchandise of people. When they go to crusade or any gathering, they, they raise raising money. That's nothing bad for people to raise money for the promotion of the gospel. But you don't have to pressurize people or play on the intelligence or use some London madness to extort money from people. It's not the will of God. Prophetic ministry doesn't go like that. That's the reason why I, I some of them they will give threatening messages. Which are so, uh, oh yeah, but when they talk about bomb on, bomb on scene, go no 1,000, it's okay. Then who wants to bomb on scene? So, so that's the area that people pass. There's a lot of pastoralization in that ministry. But if you don't have the blueprint, you know the shit. Speaking on his ministry, Paul and Silas' prophetic ministry, Prophet Adeba Mowo, who said the ministry is meant to prepare people for heaven reward, revealed where the name emanated from. Paul and Silas' prophetic ministry is a ministry that God entrusted into my destiny to make known the mystery of the gospel. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 19. To make made known the mystery of the gospel because this gospel it has a mystery it's a mystery it's a, it's a mysterious assignment because when god called jesus christ to go to the world he gave him the mandate of making disciples of people this mandate is similar to the mandate of celestial church to prepare people for every word there's a glory in the prophetic ministry that god want to enshrine in the destiny of mankind but there's a lot of missing link that is going on no, no, no. that was why god gave me the mandate of paul and Salas prophetic ministry and thank god this ministry cut across denominational settings i've been invited within an outside nigeria even non-celestians they knew that actually that god had a purpose for this prophetic ministry uh, i got that revelation from the scriptures uh, Act of Apostles chapter 16 when Paul and Silas were in prison and during the midnight they were singing and praising God many people today when they have difficulties they don't know the mystery of praising God praising God there is a mystery that is embedded in praising God when you praise God you pray Paul and Silas they were in a state of dejection but they were not frustrated they continued to sing and pray but the Bible said suddenly there was an earthquake so where that name was actually carved out was that God that delivers Paul and Silas, wherever we go and we release the right remnant of God into the life of people, testimony will begin to manifest. When I got to London, I explained to them that Paul and Silas, when God delivered them, it was as a result of the logo of the glory of God in their life. But, but people do not understand logo. Logo is like an identity. This seventh and rest now is a logo. Celestial salvation, there is a logo. There's a mandate that the Lord, uh, like logo is like a trademark. Because he said, these signs they shall accompany those that believe in me. Are, uh, uh, we are product of signs and wonders. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 18 said, I and the children whom the Lord has given unto me were for signs and wonders. So when God liberated Paul and Silas from their bondage, testimonies erupted the entire Christendom. That was the grace that the Lord gave to me that propagate my message through this trademark, Paul and Salah's prophetic ministry. And another thing is that many people do not know that I even have the gift of teaching and, or, and pastoral and, or, or whatever. But you know, in economics, business, there's what you call division of labor. And there's what you call area of specialization. So my area of specialization in those fivefold ministry, you know, we have fivefold ministry, is prophetic ministry. And when it comes to prophetic sessions or prophetic declarations, I used to hear God clearly. 
because there are three stages of hearing God. Some people say the angels reveal to them, the host of heaven reveal to them. But Thus said the Lord in the scripture 817 times. In Bible survey, 817 times you hear, Thor said the Lord. 365 times, do, uh, do not fear. Do not fear. So in the 365 days that you have in a year, the message is do not fear. Prophet Adebamo, who pointed that evangelists that has no base are just shaking like wind, revealed how he combined prophetic ministry with his work as a shepherd. I've come to realize that in prophetic ministry, when you don't have a base, you just be like a reed shaken by the wind. That's the reason why before we established Pentecost Parish, three of us, Olale Kwamusho and Prophet Asatinuke, we went to pray for a lady at the beach. Because in Celestial Church, there are some prophecies that say, go to the beach, go and pray for people. We were at the Marina Beach. While we were praying, then I had the grace of God, I had the voice of heaven that God is going to use it to establish a church. The name of that church is going to be Pentecost Parish. And you know, Abacock said the vision is for an appointed time. So when I catch the vision, I was be I was running with the vision that God, when is the time that you want us to start? So when it was time to start, it was it was not easy because my boss, Providence Ishuri, uh, believes that ah, I, I don't want to release you. He says, you know, it's normal. He doesn't want me to go. But when it was time for me to go, I know that, that an effectual door has been opened unto me. So combining uh, prophetic ministry with church is the grace of God because I believe that. I cannot flourish maximally in prophet ministry if I did not have a base. Most of the programs we organize at Pentecost Parish, they are ministry programs. We just incorporate them into the ministry. We know that they are interwoven. Prophet Adiba Mawa, who is an author, reviewed the inspiration behind his writings about his specialization, which is the prophetic ministry. So far, so good. In the market today, in the Christian literature, we have prophetic assignments. Prophetic mystery, prophetic fire, and prophetic integrity. When I was celebrating my 30 years in prophetic ministry in 2016, the Lord inspired me that I should write a book on prophetic integrity. The one that is about to come out now that I'm still working on the book project is Occupy Till I Come. Because I discovered that in Christendom, our people, they have replaced the world with the world. Many things that people are doing now that they are claiming that it is the will of God. It's not the will of God. But the mandate of God for the apostle was that occupy till I come. You have to get yourself occupied with the things of heaven. Because when Martha was at the kitchen and Mary was hearing the voice of uh, was hearing the word of God, Martha came and complained to Jesus Christ that tell my sister to come and help me at the kitchen. But God uh, Jesus Christ told Martha that Mary has chosen her own path. Nobody can take it away from her. Martha, you are careful for many things. Our people today, they are careful for many things. And that is the reason why we are in perilous times. What is happening in Christian, not only in Christendom today, is that many are sour or mixed multitude have really crept into the church and they are really confusing the doctrine of God. And they are giving people the impression that God has sent them. But actually, Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 has cleared the air that not all those that call God, God, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And many shall say unto me on that day, we use no, your need to perform miracles, but I will confess to them, go away from me, ye workers of iniquity. I know you know that will not be our portion in Jesus' name. It reveals some instances he witnessed the mighty hand of God in power to celestial ovation. Ah, that one is multifarious. <laughs> if I begin to analyze that, because I remember a case of a lady that came to a crusade. The lady was having the problem of ease your blood that Jesus Christ uh, handled the other time. Then during the course of the administration at Ijai Bosto, precisely at Ijai Bosto, Ijai Garage, um, at, uh, at Mero there, there lot of me, there's a lady here, you are having parts, um, toilet trolls in your bags, but right now, uh, blow, uh, blood is flowing free, free, your private life freely. Come and say it was a man that used juju to have sexual intercourse with you. To the bewilderment of the crowd, the lady came out. And they, that right now, that the blood is still flowing. 
then God said I should release the prophetic word. You cannot believe. From that time, the lady have to go back to uh, Olami Jackie. But Olami Jackie is in the US now. That uh, I've got my healing after that experience. It was unbelievable. And there are some other cases like that. that uh, but uh, the Bible said if anybody will speak as an oracle of God, let that person speak as a minister in the cabinet of God. Because the three Hebrews, what God used them to do, they, they did not even expect the miracle that they encountered. But they have implicit faith in God that Nebuchadnezzar, even if God will not save us, we are not ready to bow down for your golden calf. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in that Daniel chapter 3, have to rekindle the fire seven times. Even the FT men, seven powerful men in his kingdom, they are through the three Hebrews inside the fire. The intensity of the heat that affected them, they died. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, you put three people inside the fire, I can count four people. But the image of that person is like the Son of God. That is Jesus Christ. You call it a carry, you know, the fourth man in the fire. So anywhere you go, in the book of Esther says, when you pass through fire, God will be with you. There are a lot of miracles that people have been testifying to the glory of God. I remember when I was posted to Opoji, my first posting in Opoji, one young man, was attacked by demonic spirit and she was holding a cutlass in the village. People were scared. Then, 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 then they brought the man. And this man, you want to kill everybody, saying, I said, bring the cutlass. I collected the cutlass. He said, nail down. He nailed down. Under 24 hours, this young man was under the confinement of the Holy Spirit. After 24 hours, they could not see the spirit again. The people will begin to wonder. Then observers came from Benin. They said, ah, no, they have to publish. I said, you don't need to publish it. That time, the, the popular newspaper in, in, in Edosin used to be Observer newspaper. They said, ah, no, they must publish. They said, no, it's not necessary. That was how the man was delivered from insanity and many other cases like that that are numerous to mention. While highlighting issues surrounding prophets, Prophet Adebra Moore suggested solutions to the problem, noting that many of them are walking through the pit of air. This question that you raised is a very timely question because in Celestial Church of Christ, I hold a prophetic office. Anywhere people organize programs or crusades, there used to be some internal wranglings, there will be a rancor. Why do you want to invite you to do Somebody will tell you that this person is called to the prophetic office, not all the prophets are called to the prophetic office. And in Celestial Church, we have messengers and we have prophets. But our people, they, don't, they cannot decipher, they decipher between the two. That's the reason there are a lot of mix-up that is going on now. Right now, people are not feeding on the ignorance of people to mess up the prophetic ministry. Right now, we our prophets that are really called to the ministry, they are not teachable. Because before you can flourish or you can prosper in the area of prophetic ministry, even in the hallmark of prophetic ministry, in all its ramifications, you have to first ask God that, God, am I actually called into this ministry? In Celestia Church, we have the cases of this, uh, this madman that sang the song, song uh, sing, uh, sing all well at Maboko. The man, uh, during the time when they were supposed to pray, that hourly prayer Celestia used to observe, 9, 12, 3, 6. People were just doing another thing. Then the madman removed his, uh, just remove his load. He just stood there at the front of the church, uh, seeing, ah, ah, go me fatigue you. But funny enough, after the man delivered the song, he continued his madness. So Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 13 said, I have seen madmen among my prophets. So most of them, they are giving messages from the pit of hell and they are convincing people that God has sent them. Jeremiah said that God has not sent these people. That even when we say you dream, dream, you see this, you see that. that the authenticity of the prophetic ministry is embedded in the testimony of prophecy. Because the Deuteronomy 29, verse 29, says all the secrets belong to God. The one that he revealed to us is for us and our children. Deuteronomy 18, 18, he said that 
I'm going to raise among you a prophet. Whatever that comes out from his mouth, you must listen. If you don't listen, you will pay the price. Then he continues that if any prophet now prophesy when I have not spoken, that prophet will receive damnation. So many people today, they are just walking towards the path of hell. But who are we to judge or who are we to condemn everybody? Remember 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7, 17. 1 Peter 4, 17 said, Judgment is going to begin from the house of the Lord. But the scripture said, if it first begins at us, what will be the end of those that do not believe the gospel and the unbelievers? That if the righteous has scarcely saved John the Baptist that was beheaded for saying the truth, where will the unrighteous appear? So our journey and our race, we, we are running it with fear and trembling. Uh, the problem with the prophets in Celestial Church is today, not, not this garment or your guide or your position or your title. People do not even know the difference between anointing and anointment. The marginal difference between the two. Many people today, they go for this anointment exercise because they want to showcase to their members that, yes, I am more senior than you or whatever. That is not the purpose. Jesus, look, look at this period of um, washing of feet. Jesus can talk to the disciples to many things. So many, most of these prophets, they are not humble. And when you want to hear God clearly, you have to always learn at his feet. Because the Bible revealed to us in Daniel chapter 9, verse 2, Daniel learned through books. The gift God gave to me for writing all, all these books is the gifts of inspiration. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. All scriptures is given by the inspiration of God. Men of God, when they are moved, they will prophesy. But many people today, they are just prophesying to the gallery because they want to impress people. You don't prophesy to impress people. I gave an instance about the case of Micaiah, ratio 400 to 1, concerning the, the Waterloo of Ahab at the battle. Micaiah warned him not to go to the battle, but he said no, that he will listen to the voice of the 400 prophets. But it was the Lord that sent lying spirit. In theology, that's what, that's what they call the permissive will of God. Even though God will never permit evil to happen. But the scripture revealed to us that God will not do a thing without announcing it to his servants, prophets. So who, uh, what is the making of the prophets? So it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an adventure, it's a journey that, 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 needs, that needs one to be very, very meticulous. Because any word that is spoken by the word of God one is going to account for it. Because the scripture said, every vain word spoken by man, man will give account. That's the reason why you know, many people will come to me, if I deny your God, I won't say I do anything, but I will, be, I will be counseling them and giving them the message of the scripture. From that message, God will inspire them. A, a lot of, when, most of the time when people come to me, they come for confirmation. Confirmation in the sense that it is only the word of God that gives the validity of the scriptures. Any prophet that is prophesying outside the scriptures is not a prophet. Because there are a lot of things people do today that God sent them to do this and that. They will use the name of God to tell life and to confuse people. But look at the journey that we have today. It is the spirit that is deceiving people that are in the majority now. That's why one has to be very careful. One has to be very vigilant because this is the end time scenario. And it is according to the biblical prophecy because the scripture revealed to us that on the last day only the true believers shall be raptured the ministry of the prophets engages people to show them that this is the part of god look at the case of peter and Ananias and Sapphira. peter used the spirit of discernment to know that no this guy you have deceived yourself you have not lied against man you have lied against the holy spirit you do, do you know that uh, Ananias died of shock cardiac arrest Three hours later, the wife came, she died. But these days today, people thought that our God is a magician. God is not a magician, he's a miracle worker. And God, God is still working miracles through people. You see a lot of unbelievers today, they confess Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. Because the Bible said, those that are first, they will be last. Those that are the last, they will be first. That's the reason why we really have to be very vigilant in that area. He also pointed that Inspiration comes from God, not otherwise, noting that the real prophets are the ones gifted with the Holy Spirit. My inspiration and motivation comes from the throne of His grace. And another thing that I want you to know is that what people are used to in our church, the church is celestial church, in quotes, 
the show of why I do this. No. The level of your anointing has passed that level. Because the Bible revealed to us that any word that is spoken from the mouth of God, there will be confirmation. God sent Samuel, go to the house of Eli to anoint a king. But when Jesse brought out all his children, Samuel said, God has rejected all these ones. Are you sure you don't have any other child? Oh, oh there's one inside the bush uh, looking after the flock. But can that, even the father did not believe <laughs> in the anointing of, of, of uh, Saul. Uh, I mean, uh, David, can, can, this, can, can, can this one ever be king? But they have to, someone said, I will be on my feet until you go and bring him. He anointed him. So that's the reason why one has to be very careful. The inspiration comes from the word of God. You know, uh, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 says, Study to show yourself approved as a workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Even many people do not believe in the church that we still have the word of grace working through people. Because uh, there are a lot of as I said the right there are a lot of proliferation of churches where there are people that are used that assembly of these churches because they don't have the mind of God. They are just assembling churches in order to mislead and to confuse people and to lead them to the path of hellfire. That's the reason why those of us, even even in Christian of generally, we have to be sure that when God has not put us in the place, do not put yourself in that place. It's as if that you are trying to tell God that God did not know what he's doing. And in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Everything has got a purpose. The inspiration comes basically from the word of God, I must confess to you. And when the inspiration comes, I prophesy. But I don't prophesy to convince people. Even in the area of marriage, there are two areas that prophets have to be very careful. When a young man comes to you that I want to go to be treated to a so -so person, or a lady comes to you, or during the time of naming ceremony on the eighth day, a prophet that carries the baby, the prophet must ensure that she's in, she's in this, this spirit to give the revelation of heaven. Because anything that is prophesied concerning the newborn baby will have aftermath effect. We have aftermath effect on the destiny of the baby. That's the reason why, if God has not spoken, many ladies have come, ladies have come here, I want to marry, say no, you cannot. We, we have to find out that this person, did you have shots? Let me give one here, be let me cook room. That's another area that you have to find out. Don't just say no, they are compatible. And apart from the issue of compatibility, you have to find out that this person, did you have long life? Or, or, or what? These are some of the things, some prophets they will see from morning till afternoon, some prophets from afternoon till the evening but they will not see what is going to happen in the night. It is the, only the prophet that is gifted with the spirit of perception to know what is going to happen at the end of this journey. Because in, the kind of, in one of my books, I said the kind of man you marry will determine whether you are going to a fire. The kind of woman you marry will determine whether you are going to a fire or heaven. So that's the reason why the area of marriage is very, very holistic. It's an institution that is very sacred and very sacrosanct to God. Speaking on the issue of servant prophets, using Elisha and Elijah as an example, he pointed that prophets are born, not made. So far so good. I've been to the United Kingdom, Toronto in Canada, and I used to visit South Africa regularly. Uh, when you look at the scenario of Elisha and Gehazi, you will discover that the mantle of Elijah fell on Eli uh, Elisha. The ministry, of, the prophetic ministry of Elijah, of continuity through Elisha, but when it goes to the time of Elisha to Gehazi, there was error there, because when uh, serving under the tutelage of anybody, some people, some people these days say that uh, we want kosher holy. There's nothing like one kosher holy. No, prophets are born; they are not made. Servant prophets, you will discover that nobody can succeed as a leader, if you fail as a follower. The dignity of any leader depends on the followership. And when you, when God uses your anointing to bring people to the church, it is your character that you retain them. The anointing does not retain people in the church, it is the character. That's why the area of character development is missing in our churches today. I wrote a book, uh, there was a chapter dedicated to character development. So the issue of servant prophet, 
is very, very crucial. There must be transference of anointing. The anointing of Eli transferred to Samuel. That was why Samuel was able to excel in his prophetic ministry, although even though he has his shortcomings, but yet the grace of God manifested in his ministry. He also explained the difference between anointing and anointment. Anointing comes from God. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 26 and 27, as he said, by the reason of the anointing, the yokes are broken. But people thought that it is when oil is poured on your head that you are anointed. That one is anointment in celestial doctrine. That is anointment. But the fact that you you receive anointment is an essential for promotional exercise or for administrative works does not mean that you have the giftings of the Holy Spirit in that particular place. Because when during the baptism of Jesus Christ at Jordan, John chapter 1, verse 29, you will discover that when Jesus Christ came for baptism, John the Baptist refused bluntly that no i was the one that's supposed to come to you but jesus said you have to do it in order to fulfill all righteousness even jesus has submitted himself in order to make the, the ministry of the anointing of jesus christ to be perfect and the testimony was that the heavens opens and a voice came from heaven that this is my beloved son in whom and we so the validity of heaven was revealed during the anointing of the call of Jesus Christ, although Jesus Christ was an embody, uh, is, is an embodiment of the Holy Spirit, but yet he need to still go back to John the Baptist to receive the mandate. So many people today they are in ministry, but they don't have the mandate of ministry. And if if, if there is any issue with anybody saying I'm called in ministry, God has called me, but not most of them really have the anointing. They, they don't have the functionality of the Holy Spirit to excel in that ministry. The other one, messenger and prophet. When you look at the book of Malachi chapter 4, verse 5, he said, uh, I'm going to send Elijah the prophet, my messenger to you. And do you know that Elijah came in form of John the Baptist? Two reasons God did not allow Elijah to enter heaven. One, the cause of Adam that you are dust, you come back to the dust. The anointing of Elijah was so profuse to the extent that he told God that I don't want to be buried. That when it was time for Elijah to die, it was shadows of fire that took him away. And when he got to the gate of heaven, although I was not there, <laughs> when he got to the gate of heaven, he cannot use that corruptible body to enter. So he has to be sent, he has to be sent back as Eli, uh, as John the Baptist. Another reason. At Mount Carmel, God did not ask him to kill the prophet of Baal. God just wanted him to show superiority or the power of God and power of Baal. Just show them that I am their Lord. My glory I will not give to any graven image. But he said, no, arrest them, kill them. And the scripture said, whosoever live by the sword shall die by the sword. So he has to, be, so he has to come back as John the Baptist and he was beheaded. Yeah, in, in the circumstances that led to why he was beheaded was so dramatic. Uh, that woman, uh, the, 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 the after, the, after the dancing, uh, please, the king said, I will give you anything. But meanwhile, the king took the wife of his brother. And uh, John Razor has been preaching against that. So that woman said, what did you want? Uh, the, 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 the lady came to the mother. What should I ask the king to give me? Give me the head of the, John the Baptist of the platter of gold. In order to fulfill that prophecy, that he has to be beheaded. So that was another reason. When explaining further on the blueprint of prophetic ministry, he said not all are called into the ministry to be prophet as there are different ministries. I said some people, they are just called as holy job. Nobody asked them to go and establish church. But most of them today, they are them of affairs, confusing people. They are supposed to give supportive they are supposed to play a supportive role in the church. You now, all those five four ministries, you know, they cannot divorce them from each other. The teaching ministry, evangelistic ministry, apostle, even the celestial church. So, uh, uh, like in my ministry now, I discover some people as apostles. I used to call them as apostles, but in celestial church, you don't you don't find apostles in celestial church. Celestial church just concentrated on the prophetic and the pastoral ministry. That's the reason why the confusion continues now since 1985. Because they don't know the difference, they are not doing anything 
they are not paying any attention to envisioning people, teach them in the, on the path of God. They are just concentrating that immediately you are called, is either a prophet, holy show, and the holy, holy, holy show. So, so those two ministries, they have really had blown it. And most of the confusion that we have in our churches today is as a result of not giving attention to other area of ministries.